I did not want to make a video about this before because it was hugely popular already and I knew things were about to get ugly. And they did. Things got very ugly. In 2007, the massive multiplayer online role-playing game RuneScape was booming with activity. This was a time when the game was thriving among the top competitors in the category, even among World of Warcraft and EVE Online. However, the problem of real-world trade, the ability for bots and or gold farmers to farm in-game currency and sell it to players, turned out to be much more damaging than anyone had ever anticipated. Many young players would use their mom's credit card to purchase in-game coins from shady online retailers. Oftentimes, those retailers would steal the credit card information and take money from little Timmy's mom. Suddenly, her credit card is maxed out and she can no longer buy that stainless steel cooking set. So she would call up the credit card company and issue a claim of fraud. Well, the fraud claims just kept coming in. Lots of little Timmy's mothers from all over America were ringing up the credit card companies and issuing fraud claims. Eventually, the credit card companies made the connection that tons of fraud claims were associated with RuneScape Gold. So, the credit card companies rung up Jagex and said, Hey, if you don't stop this ruckus, then we won't let people use our credit cards to buy membership. And Jagex said, Oh, golly jeepers, fine, I'll see what I can do. Then Jagex seed what they can do, and on January 2nd, 2008, they axed real-world trade in one fell swoop by restricting free trade. They instituted an unbalanced trade restriction across all RuneScape players, meaning you couldn't freely make a trade unless there was a 25,000 GP disparity between you and your partner's offers. They also limited player killing, PvP combat, to the Bounty Hunter Crater, which is mechanically complicated and made it very difficult for gold farmers to transfer wealth. Unfortunately, this meant that one of the most famous activities in the game was largely removed because you couldn't loot anything from your opponent in the wild. But be it because of improved fraud prevention or any other reason, Jagex revisited this issue a few years later and decided free trade wouldn't be so bad anymore. And on February 1st of 2011, Jagex removed the restriction on free trade in RuneScape. Suddenly, you could gift and lend items to your friends and transfer any amount of money to your other accounts. However, Jagex was not prepared for the downsides. There was a massive financial incentive to run bot farms. Scams came back in full force. Gambling ran rampant across the entire game, and the anti-cheating team wasn't equipped to handle such a surge in rule breaking. Suddenly, RuneScape became a very real way to make a living for thousands of people across the globe. Not just from third world countries, but gambling hosts famously paid off their entire university tuition by having the upper hand in gambles and selling their profits for real life money. Back in those days, you may have heard of Fishy, Oharo Dare, Mewtwo. These guys didn't just profit a few thousand dollars. Hundreds of thousands of dollars were made by these top dicers in the game, and all it took was some knowledge about probability and how to market your gambling services to other RuneScape players. The Duel Arena could even be more profitable, but required more knowledge on in-game mechanics and understanding how combat works in the game. Back in 2011, the Duel Arena was never a fair coin flip. One person would always get first hit in the stake, and you could always ensure that you had first hit. When you logged in, you would be tied to a number that would dictate your priority against other players in the game. This is called player identification, or PID. If you were the first person to log into the game server for that day, your PID number would be 1. This means the game would give you priority over every other player on the world. For instance, if you both tried to pick up an item at the same time, you would pick up the item first because you had a lower PID than them. You would also get first hit in a fight, every single stake. So imagine using a very high hitting weapon like a Vesta Longsword, where you might do as few as 4 hits in the entire stake. Getting first First hit means you get an entire extra hit against your opponent, so with big damage you could get 4 hits and your opponent only gets 3. Overall, first hit in fights like this would result in a staggering 58% versus 42% odds advantage. Yet, people didn't know this. They would stake bills and bills, and lose them to the players that knew the importance of player ID. But even when players weren't so naive to be exploited in this way, other exploits would be used against them to profit. All kinds of bugs were discovered to get advantages and stakes. There was the Joolage bug, which let you compound strength bonuses from multiple sources, summoning bugs that allowed you to call your follower into the fight to help you fight your opponent. A bug that healed you to full whenever your dungeoneering team had entered a new dungeon. And a bug that let you simply leave the stake if you were losing. Other types of scams happened too. It became more and more clear that the Duel Arena was only a mosh pit for scammers and bots. You will never find the more wretched hive of scum and villainy. 
So a few years ago, I anti-scammed the Duel Arena scammers and took a small amount of their money, at one point acquiring 13 bill for myself. But this was only a drop of water in a massive ocean of profit that scammers and advantage stakers were earning every year. They made millions of dollars over the course of a few years. Any wealthy travelers that found themselves in the Caribbean desert were quick to be preyed upon by a few dozen hungry stakers. But Jagex never got the resources to do weekly bans of these players, because it was too much maintenance work. So after tens of thousands of players rose up and petitioned for Jagex to make change, they finally gave in and nerfed the duel arena so players could only stake as much as 10 million GP per duel. This wiped out the profitability. It's no longer worth it to wait around for rich noobs when the highest you can duel is only 10 mil. On balance, this was a good change while they wait to implement the PvP arena, a skill-based PvP minigame that will serve as the eventual replacement for the duel arena. But when people want to gamble, they will gamble. Gambling is not gone from RuneScape, it's just less accessible, and Jagex is no longer providing the platform that enabled scams and gambling on such a massive scale. This leaves players to their own devices. Deathmatching is a form of combat where players agree to initiate combat in the same gear, not run away, and not teleport. You start the fight, and if you're about to die, you just let yourself die. Bro, he just hits the 12, like there's no coming back from it, bro. He just hits the 12, and you know what's crazy? Ask me what's crazy, man. That motherfucker had a cheesecake, and I had Inferno. I had an odds, damn it! With the Duel Arena gone, gambling has exploded into an uncontrollable frenzy across the world map. At the Grand Exchange, Castle Wars, Camelot, and Lumbridge. Scammers, odd stakers, and gambling addicts alike have taken to high-risk deathmatching. However, it's a little different. Players also agree to not eat any food, making it pretty similar to a Duel Arena steak. But it's all based on the honor system, and like I said, Duel Arena scammers also came to this new gambling spot to make some coin. There are subtle things you can do to increase your chance of an advantage. For example, some players keep going in and out of the dangerous area to juke out their opponent and get first hit for themselves. What are you doing, bro? What are you doing? According to the rules, it doesn't matter how your opponent got first hit. If you leave the fight, then you are considered a scammer from then onwards. Your opponent could even stand underneath other people to make you misclick, and you would still need to stay and fight. No, no, I didn't even eat. No, no, no. No, and you lost still. And you, no, bro. F*** off, bro. I'm taking your GP. You're actually a scammer, bro. Somebody clip that, bro. These sneaky tricks aren't technically scamming according to the rules of the fight, but they are highly effective tactics used by advantage gamblers. Some players don't care about their reputation and will use a vengeance spell to rebound damage in the middle of the fight, or eat food when they're about to die. The only consequence they face is that the opponent will probably never rematch that person unless they double name change and assume a new identity. These advantage gamblers and scammers will often go up to wealthy players and ask to deathmatch. They intimidate, tease, and prod at wealthy players to get them to fight, sometimes for billions of GP. The sad thing is, sometimes it actually works. DM me one bill, scrub. Fight me now. Fucking fight me, freak. Don't trust him. Who are you? I'm an old man here to tell you what I learned from years of dealing with these young whippersnappers. Here, take this book. It will help you listen to the world about what to do and what not to do. Bro, it's 2022. No one reads anymore. Then listen to Audible, of course. Oh yeah, that's right. I will. Thank you. The most successful people I've ever met have read a ton of books. That's why I listen to audiobooks on Audible, because I can learn a lot from books like Green Lights by Matthew McConaughey. This autobiography delves into his life from childhood and creates a chain of stories that eventually reveals how he became one of the world's most revered actors. He describes his approach to situations by figuring out if they say go, wait, or stop. He even narrates the entire book himself, and I happily apply my own version of his approach to my own life. But Audible has basically any title you can think of, so if you ever want to go on a walk, clean your home, or kill goblins while listening to one of thousands of titles, you can use audible.com slash kempq or click the link in the description below. That link also gives you a 30 days free trial. Absolutely no charge if you cancel. This also supports the YouTube channel, so any click is appreciated. Thank you. DM me too, Bill. Uh, red light. Bye bye Because of all the scams, players don't trust each other to fight honorably. This created a demand for middlemen to reliably transfer the bulk of GP between opponents. So if one of them casted vengeance or ate food, obviously they wouldn't be paid out the money. 
The middlemen are well-established clan chats that take a large cut, often 10% of the pot. There are lots of ranks in these clan chats to help regulate and monitor fights between players. These ranks pay a lot of money to the clan chat owner to buy a rank and start taking commissions from these fights. Very similar to Dyson clans from back in 2011. However, power corrupts. My anonymous source tells me that some of these ranks will enforce rules differently for their friends. Middlemen have the final say on situations like this one, where Range Blitz goes back in the safe zone because he was trying to avoid a mage rusher to the east. He immediately got disqualified, and Green Bay got to take all the winnings, a 2 billion GP win. But it was the middleman's final decision, and if he's cozy with one of the participants, corruption is bound to take place. My source is telling me this, I'm not saying this is what happened, but it makes sense that situations like this one would occur. Being a middleman is no small thing. These middlemen are making billions of GP per month. Of course, this is competitive. There were many middleman clans back in November, and they were all in competition with one another. To get new customers and gambling addicts, they rely on bots to spam and advertise their middleman clan chats. But that's not possible when one of the rival clans has a player moderator in their pocket. Yep, a player moderator is going around PvP worlds and muting every other attempt at a middleman clan, but not muting the bots of one particular clan. The player mod is being paid to silence the competition. Now obviously I don't know who this is, it's impossible to tell, but I've been told it's definitely happening. Many players profiting from deathmatching will blackmail and send death threats if you screw with their money. Saying stuff like, Your whole family gonna get it. Think I'm capping? Tell your gambling buddies they getting it too. You just made it bad. I hope this paints a clearer picture of how much people rely on gambling and RuneScape as their income, and how far these players will go to secure their next windfall. There are so many ways players will try to profit from this industry. For example, Sir Pugger made a video two months ago about how bots will disguise themselves and then use scripts to gear up in max strength and instantly KO gamblers. There are also players that wait at teleport spots with clients that automatically teleblock anyone that teleports in. There are mage rushers like West Ham that have made billions of GP simply from rushing these deathmatchers. This form of gambling became very popular after the Duel Arena nerf. It's where most of the gambling addicts went. Maybe some of them went to the gambling bot hosts. I think only new players fall for those. And I had to consider whether or not I should make a video about this, because it would popularize this new way of gambling. But now that the jig is up, the corruption and scamming is revealed, players have become mostly disillusioned by gambling and RuneScape in general, and this aspect of the game isn't as big as it once was.